Hello, my name is uh, Brian Coughlin. I work for Inland Fisheries Ireland, which is the state agency for fisheries. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here. I have my other three colleagues in the front row. If you hear any loud heckling, it's from, it's from them. Um, brief introduction about who we are and what we do. Uh, Inland Fisheries Ireland, we are responsible for uh, the protection, management and conservation of Ireland's inland fisheries and sea angling resources. And there are some of our happy customers, because we have a, not only do we have a protection element, we have a research element, but we also have a development element. So we, we do the hard sell as well in terms of these species, in terms of going abroad and making sure people come to Ireland to go fishing. As you can see there, it's a very simple equation, but you know, it makes sense. Fisheries resources are the sum of the species and the habitats that, that support those species. And dam removal is one of those things that f falls into the things that can, uh, the pressures that can be put on these systems. We're very lucky in Ireland in terms of the, the, the laws that, inf that, that we can enforce in terms of the, in terms of the fisheries. We have a Fisheries Consolida Consolidation Act, and as you can see there, every, every dam constructed after 1842 shall be built to allow the migration of fish at all periods of the year. Therefore, they should have a fish pass. And that is actually true on 95, 98% of the structures in our rivers, is that they actually do have a fish pass. But this is actually only referring to weirs and dams and other built, um, how would you describe it? Built structures for, for a reason, either to take off water or for, other, for another abstraction purposes. As you can see here, not everyone read the law. These are two, these are two structures that we found in our, in our sort of barrier surveys. As you can see, there is, no f there is no fish passage there. There are complete barriers to fish passage. So we did well with our legislation, but it wasn't applied uh, you know, 100% across the board. This presentation is quite simple. S we're going to talk about a little bit about the National Barrier Programme, which has just started this year. And obviously, when you start a programme that like, like that, you need to identify where your barriers are in terms of locating them, trying to get as much information as you can possibly get when you're working at a national level. And then you're going to have to try to assess those barriers and put them in some sort of order for mitigation. A quick look at some of the, the barrier removals and mitigations we've done around the country and how those weir removals mitigations are considered by the population and the success and failure of some of those mitigations. Some of them went well, some of them went really well, and some of them are still outstanding after many years. And then a very simple biological response to a very simple mitigation of a structure in a river. Um, the National Barrier, Mitig Barrier Mitigation in Ireland, before 2016, we had my regional colleagues that might be in the front, mitigating structures around the country with no real overarching plan. But they were out there and they were mitigating barriers to fish passages in terms of weirs and bridges and other structures. After 2016, you can see here we were involved in the Amber project, which is still on running. So it's a great project. We also had a national reconnect program, which was a similar sort of thing. And uh, they're still ongoing. But this year, 2018, the national barrier assessment program began. This is me. I'm the research officer for that. And it was sponsored by the Department of Housing, Planning and Local Government in Ireland. They're the, the body that is res responsible for the Water Framework Directive in Ireland. And they, only they gave us five simple tasks, yeah, quite simple. Um, develop an assessment tool, develop something that you can go out and measure the structures with, geolocate them, find them, measure them, assign them a fish passage sort of uh, impact. Survey program. Get people out there on boots on the ground, survey these structures. A national database to record all these structures. A prioritization of works. Figure out a way, how can we put these in order and importance? Or do we just, because historically what we've done is we've got money and we've done the job. We've got low hanging fruit and we've caught a hold of that and we've done the ones we can, the ones we can when we could do it. But hopefully now with this we can be a bit more, get a bit more prioritization going. And then we have a guidance document. How do you do these things? What's the best way of doing these things? The best amount of money, cost, cost effective, get people on board and get the job done with least amount of trouble as possible. So some of the challenges for this. Um, where the hell is everything in terms of these barriers in the countries? In the country? Um, 
all these or different organizations have information that we could feed down into just a single unified layer of where all the potential barriers are in Ireland. And obviously, as you can imagine, it's quite a bit of, bit of work just to even get there when you have multiple government agencies all feeding into the one layer. And try to extract data from government agencies sometimes is quite, quite, a, quite a barrier. But just one brief example of the potential benefit of actually going after these things. If you look at here, the, the National Sea Farm Programme, which is uh, the Catchment Flood Risk Assessment and Management Programme. And that was basically the WFD Floods Directive in Ireland. And they, uh, they basically went out and they did their Floods Directive thing. But every structure in the country, in these, uh, these localised areas that they looked at, they produced a spot on a map and a photo upstream and downstream of that structure. So I went after them. And what they did is they managed to supply me with seven and a half, eight thousand photos of structures in Irish rivers. And, uh, you know, you look at that structure there, I mean, these are all barriers, obviously. Um, and you can assess it from your desk, is it, a, is it a bit barrier or not? And when you think about seven and a half thousand points, and if you needed to send someone to have a look at that by eye, you know, this is a really valuable resource. And it was something that, you know, took years of work off of the National Barriers Programme. So that information is out there, and it's important to look to your engineers and your other state bodies in terms of information that is available to do these jobs. Just to assess, is there, are these things a barrier or not, just from your desk. Um, we developed a historic barriers there, which was looking at all the historic weirs, culverts, fords that were based around in the country. Canals, weirs, fords, mills. As you can see here, Ireland wasn't heavily developed in the mid 18th, 19th century. Um, most of our heavy industry was based around Dublin, as you can see there, which is this red glob. And some of our major river systems down here. And 17,000 structures is actually not very many compared to some of our European neighbours. However, Ireland is intensively, has an intensive road network. So if you put the road network on our map and you look at the interactions between the road and the, and the river, there's potentially a lot of potential barriers out there. And each road has potentially a drop off the back of it, has a potential to be a barrier to fish passage. <laughs> so, yeah, there's one that'll keep me busy for a couple of years anyway. Um, and just a bit brief on our progress so far. We've actually surveyed 14,000 structures already out of a potential, so we've done 2%. So I think that's not bad for our first year. Um, yeah, so we're doing well. I actually have met people out on the field, in the field at the moment, surveying, surveying structures, surveying potential barriers. So we're, you know, we're gonna truck on with that. So that's just the National Barrier Program and where we are at the moment. And uh, what we have, we're just basically searching out where these potential, potential barriers are at the moment. We've also mitigated quite a number of structures. Um, and we have good uh, you know, solutions. This is a, a weir that was removed on one of our smaller rivers down the southeast, southwest. Um, and as you can see there, historical mir will mir sorry, historical mill and weir structure, um, proper barrier to fish passage, um, big poaching location, um, best opportunity, cut a hole in the middle of it, remove it. Uh, the, the barrier has been retained in situ as a historic element. It's actually probably safer now that it's in the dry, mortared up, and, it, and you know, the water is no longer flowing over, trying to rip a hole in it. But also, solution fits with the WFD. Removed all the ponding upstream, reconnect the river, and obviously there's no fish passage problem anymore. And it actually, there's a little walkway up to it and a little board that you know, tells the people why it was removed and the, the positive impacts for that. We have bridge mitigation, which is our bread and butter. When you see the, the number of potential barriers in terms of bridge, ro bridge, river interactions, this is our bread and butter in Ireland in a lot of situations. Badly designed culvert, as you can see here, stepped out the, stepped out the culvert, providing f easy fish passage for brown trout and salmon, eels and the like, you can all m migrate nice and handily upstream up from there. Um, this is a... Out of every 100 barriers you look at, bridges, you might get 10 that are 
that sort of looks something like that, there is a potential barrier. So they do fragment the river network, and they are a significant problem, because in most cases, the best river habitat that we have is at the very top of these catchment. So, you know, 15 or 20 of those bad boys along a river network can really fragment your potential for uh, fish passage. Here's an example of a larger structure that was mitigated a number of years ago. This is a weir in Kilkenny, if you're aware in Ireland, it's a historic town. Upstream of here, there's a castle. There's another weir actually just upstream of here, and there's a big castle. And it was, uh, they'd had a flood relief scheme through the, through the site. And it was a deem that the, the weir couldn't be removed, but fish passage would need to be instigated. As you can see here, what they did, dropped the level of the weir on the top here, and built a rock ramp structure down through the site. And that means that that structure went from a complete barrier for, for all salmonids and all fish species into very much a low, uh, sort of a low impact barrier for, for, for fish passage, mainly due to the fact that there's actually quite a bit of white water through the structure. Um, but it's, as you can see here, there's a viewing platform. There's another viewing platform up here. There's a walkway down along this side. Um, this fishing goes on in here, so it's very well, con very well uh, taken by the local people in terms of an alterate as a not removing the structure, but actually modifying it in a way which is appropriate, and people like to walk along it and look at it. And then obviously we have these mitigations that go right and that go wrong. Um, okay, so uh, these are two weirs in uh, in Southern Ireland. Um, both of them are fish passage issues. This top one was started in 2016. 2006, the bottom was 2012. Same problems, they were approached completely different in manners. This one is, they, they attempted remediation through when there was a fl uh, when flood relief work, works were going on. They tried to push the, the, mm -hmm. a rock ramp, issue, a rock ramp uh, sort of mitigation measure through here. The local community got up in arms as maybe rightly so, uh, there was perceived lack of communication, perception of no choice given. The other issue, the other weir in Castletown, fisheries and community-led approach from the bottom up. And this year, as you can see here, this is the weir, in, uh, the Fermoy weir now. Uh, it's in a very bad state. Fish passage issues have got worse. The local, uh, there is quite local resentment. There's a lot of friction down there. While community managed, well, the community led restoration or mitigation on the, on the Castletown Weir went very positively. There's now picnic tables. It's managed by the local community. It's very positive effect. Even though the weir wasn't removed, um, there was a very positive outcome there in terms of fish passage and interaction with the local community in terms of the fisheries board. Now here, as you can see here, public perception is more important than construction and more difficult. If this was approached in a, in a slightly different way, potentially the outcomes would be slightly different. And I just say finish this up. Simple, simple, small, simple, positive steps. This is a small head weir that was built by a community, by a community group for aesthetic reasons. Okay, and what happened was uh, it's a heavily channelized river, built this structure, impounded 800 meters of water. As you can see, it's a brown trout fishery. Upstream of this weir, there was obviously fish community changes. When you build a weir, you pound the water back. And when we, when we investigated it, basically we were just doing fishery surveys through the area. The baseline pre-works, as you can see here with the blue colors, it was dominated by trout. Four years after the weir construction, it was dominated by pike and roach, with a very few numbers of trout. But when we removed the weir, the fisheries community went back to what we saw uh, sort of pre-weird construction. So as you can see, a very simple, and the numbers went, that was, I think that was two trout, that was back to about 180 trout. So a very simple mitigation option in terms of just turning a weir into a pair deflector, just, just moving to site. It's still, the community still has their little bit of river modification, but the community composition was restored, improved trout numbers, there's better trout fishing upstream, more, I think it's more visually, visually appealing structure. It's not quite so bad in terms of the Water Framework Directive, in terms of hydromorphology. And it's just an idea that a small modification can make actually a big difference 
So even removing this small weir can actually do quite a bit for, your, uh, for the fish community composition. So thank you very much. Thank you.